Hi, we're Skimmel and Golden. We're gonna improvise another one for you here live on the radio. This is the birth of a new genre known as Freak Rock, freely improvised progressive rock. I hope you enjoy it.
Ohio. Hello, Mr. Skillman. I'm Mr. Golding. We are Skillman and Golding. How on did, Facebook. <laughs> how did the two of you guys come to be and form as one um, and get together to improvise together? Well, you were hosting at the Cavern. Yeah, that's where we first met. Adam is a frequent open micer in the city. Yeah. And he uh, uh, came in as an improvised keyboard player. He brought his own keyboard. And uh, he played for the first few times by himself, but then he invited me to play with him. And we kind of just had a chemistry right away. So we've just been playing ever since. And yeah, we've only ever played once with a live audience. And that was just like a 10 minutes or something. Yeah, it's all, everything is just off the cover. Live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's ironic because you guys both had very extensive training. Yeah. So you learned a lot of music. And a lot of learning with music starts with like scales and very technical drills. Which isn't as much choice as if you're allowed to choose when you go up or down in the scale. Mm -hmm. So how do you go from being so trained and methodical yeah. to how you guys are now? Kyle, do you want to go first? I think we probably have different answers to this question, <laughs> probably. Uh, I think listening is the first thing. Um, like with me, music and playing with other people, it's kind of always going together. Uh, so you have to kind of listen to other people to fit in, I guess, or to play what's best for the best situation. And so with playing with Adam, that's kind of like that on hyper and in the moment, I think I'm just playing the best thing or whatever comes to mind. It's very like uh, like subconscious kind of drumming, I guess, for fun. Mm. Yeah, I mean, myself, I studied composition originally and then studied a bunch of other academic subjects and over time realized that um, um, what unified all my interests was an interest in language and communication and what that meant is that I should focus more so on improvisation and music because communication is normally improvised. People don't. A real conversation isn't a scripted conversation. That is correct. Well, now that you mention it, it feels oh, oh, and I should say, and after, but all that academics have also took me in a programming direction. I used to teach computer programming, and now when I teach improvisation to you know, kids and to adults, I think of it as though I'm teaching them programming, but how to program their own minds to follow different rules so they can choose what style they want in a given moment, rather than someone telling them what style to have. That's very interesting. It almost feels unnatural. Follow a new rule every day. Yeah, it feels unnatural now, because if you think about it, all the songs that we listen to, um, they, they've just been yeah. and very like artificially forced to be repeated. You remember that kid in the playground who would just repeat himself over and over again to just to bug you? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what this, maybe the state is that kid. I, think, I digress. I think with improvisation too, part of it is limiting yourself and that kind of like lets you explore your creativity. So if you, like as a drummer, if you just have a bass drum hi-hat and snare and you just kind of use that as much as you can, it kind of gives you, uh, you kind of earn some creativity through that. We get, we get more creative. And just that you're talking about the rules, right? Yeah. How? There's time you just play one note with one finger. Yeah, we don't follow rules when we play, but when I practice, uh, I follow rules, and when I teach, I, I teach people to follow rules. Just your conscious mind is like a narrow bottleneck, so most of the stuff you don't want to be thinking about. But if you want to change your habits, then you should think consciously about that part that you want to change. Mm -hmm. Well, and then hopefully it goes back to your intuition. <laughs> hopefully you forget the rules, as my shirt says. Actually. Interesting. So, do you feel like that foundation was? essential to make you move into this improv state or do you feel like without that classical training and you know your degree? Oh, it would be hugely different because what I'm trying to reproduce is the kind of improvisation that composers used to do that's been lost to history like Beethoven and Mozart and everything they're all fluent improvisers and they used to perform live improvisation in between like their sonatas or whatever um, and that was completely lost especially when recording sort of took over the classical world so um, I'm trying to do something closer to that but I've also been very influenced by prog rock I think what we do is free prog, freely improvised prog rock. So like, um, as a kid, you know, my mother was a hippie and I was influenced by that stuff. I was also influenced by Japanese video game music, which itself had been influenced by prog rock. And I pieced that together later in life. And but that's also where the classical meets rock music. So I've been always looking at that sort of interdisciplinary bridge. Interesting, because you talked about your first musical uh, experience with like, Oh yeah. Music on a Nintendo. Super and Nintendo. There's like a, Mario Paint. a link between that and. I had a keytar before that, a, a, <laughs> a m m not full size keytar, like little keys. But I didn't have lessons until I was 14. I wanted lessons at a young age, but I was basically just improvising until I got lessons later. My technique was not good. It's been, it would be better if I had someone teach me improvisation the way I'm teaching people improvisation. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's crazy because it feels like we were trying to you know, preserve or also like carry on the music of classics like Beethoven and Mozart. Without reproducing their methods, mm -hmm. which and is using improvisation as a primary tool. Which, at least in the formal instructions, not inside. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> which, in a way, we've taken away the fact that we wanted to preserve it so much um, 
we are repeating the music, but we forgot about the improv part. Yeah, because we're the process, not the product. Very. That, that should go on a t-shirt. <laughs> Someone prints it now. I'll, I'll wear one. Sounds good. <laughs> Make it cool. Um, did you, when you guys uh, met each other, were your beards just as long? Or <laughs> as they grown no, they haven't shaved since then, so they must be longer now, yeah, right? It's definitely been a beard change. Wow. Kyle cut his hair at one point, which yeah, was like sacrilege. Was clean shaving for a little. That was heartbroken. I think I've done that twice in the last. <laughs> hair broken. Just hair broken. Yeah. So look at that bond. Like subconsciously, <laughs> you guys didn't realize you just have grown together, and your beards have grown together as well. Yeah, that's true. That is with musicians, you know. And um, like you know, this is very non-traditional. And when you think about recording, like you guys are not ever creating the same music twice. Yeah. So how are you going to go about your recording process? Well, I think just doing live recordings as much as we can and kind of uh, posting those and just, you know, whoever's interested can come find us at open mics or we have house shows at our place, so. Yeah, I'm playing at open mics all the time. Like, just uh, follow me on Facebook. I'm always posting and follow Skillman Golding on Facebook. I, so I, my, my focus is actually on, because they say think globally, act locally. I take the same political view of music, really, that I want to focus first on local live the local live act of making music in a spontaneous way, just like having a conversation with somebody, which is also, you know, you're supposed to start locally that way too. So mm -hmm. that's my focus on the local live performance. And I, I play live on Facebook a little bit, but I need to make, get better cameras. And <laughs> For sure. Um, but yeah, I'm always posting on Facebook uh, when I'm performing, which is uh, several times a week. That's really and cool about Kyle's you. Kyle's with you in his schedule allows. Yeah. yeah. He's a hardworking skill <laughs> man. <laughs> it's cool about your recording process because it's like, it's a snapshot in your life. Um, yeah, and yeah. it's that moment you lived, and it's like unique to that moment. Like you said, for conversations, like that is unique to that moment. Yeah, because in the studio, you can always take another take, but if it's a live recording, that's what happened. It's just, it's just the facts. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to get audience participation, too. Yeah. Where we, we did a, set, a couple sets with a vocal coder, and where Adam would repeat a phrase over top of that. Yeah, an English sentence chosen by the audience. Play, and we'd get the, we get the phrase from the audience. The English phrase, so, yeah. It turned out that was okay. So Last night, I got people singing the English phrase. Boy caught the Ontario cannabis store. It's, five, it's a five bar phrase. If you want an example of a five bar phrase, there's your go to. Yeah, because um, I was going to ask about singing, improv like improvised singing next. So. Oh, well, I always sing when I practice, but I, I can play piano for longer than I can sing. Mm. Yeah, so I can't sing all day. But I do enjoy the audience participation. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, was, I was improvising with people with no audience before I started performing for an audience because I preferred that lack of the power difference between audience and performer. Um, that's harder to, um, you know, um, do really because people don't have a, a script for it in the same way that they do for like, oh, now you come to the venue at the time and you sit in the place or maybe you dance, but not for too long because that would be, oh my god, and then <laughs> and then the concert's over and you go home and then you know, you schedule your next thing. Um, you know, house parties are a little different than that, and um, you know, it's just good to get out of the script, the standard script. Cool. You guys are really breaking a lot of um, traditional foundations that have been set out. That's a goal, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's good. You're getting that vibe a little bit. No, I think it's really fun. I'm like. Yeah, I mean, charging for recorded music is artificial scarcity anyway. But you know, the live performance act that's actually takes performance time. Same with teaching. You know, um, you can't reproduce teaching with just a pre-recorded thing. But once the music's made, charging people to listen to it is just making sure that the poorest people can't hear the music. You know, it, there's no additional cost once the music is recorded to distribute it you know, nowadays with digital files. The cost is in creating things. You know, Beethoven never had royalties. He went all on commissioning. But today we could have crowd commissions, and we do sometimes. And I think that's better because that's not artificial scarcity. That's it actually takes time to make the album. It doesn't take time to send it around. So we don't should we should charge for the part that actually costs something, which is making the album, as opposed to distributing it. That's really cool. I feel like I need to follow you around, like follow you guys around and learn more things. Like well, follow me on Facebook. <laughs> and the breadcrumbs are all there. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, you should definitely come to the next show. show. Yeah, well, that will be posted on the Skillman Golding page. We'll do another Skillman Golding house show probably within a month, I think. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I like that you guys are thinking a lot about different aspects of, like, what you do um, and not just kind of doing things for the sake of doing things. Yeah, because music got depoliticized and commodified and that's what's up. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to round out the show with Jessica, but I just want to thank you guys for being here. And for those who want to follow you guys, Gilman and Golding on... On Facebook. Also, Adam Golding on Facebook. And there's a link to my other stuff there. Anarchist Piano Lessons. Kyle 
got a lot of projects. I got a lot of projects. And, uh, what's this place? What's this place? Uh, the Riches. Scarlet and Golding at uh, The Riches. Um, Handsome Savages. And, uh, after the Mountain. My guitar is out there. So. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah. Got some stuff going on. That's why it's tough to play with this guy sometimes. But <laughs> yeah. Make it happen. That's why we don't rehearse. Yeah, also check out my partner on Facebook, Spectralize. She's a musician too. Amazing. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys.